Just fucking do it. Subscribe now. His dad's forearms look like Popeye the Sailor. Which he used to whack Marcus with. Spare the rod, spoil the child. So we went up there, and I mean, his parents are so very gracious. Um, and, uh, and, and, and I could relate to the getting whacked, just as when we went to see Josh Kim's parents a few times and met all his nine brothers and sisters and a few others over the years, because I, what made this guy different? Why didn't he turn out just like a piece of shit like Bandejo over here. Why? Why? And it's always the same. Always. Strict, if not military, disciplinary background. 100%. In Josh's case, his dad's at West Point, now a retired senior army officer. Uh, and uh, we had, uh, you know, uh, Herman Gehring Sr. as his father, whacking him around. I've never met a, one of the superstars' uh, parents that was like you. Not just you, but comes to the seminar. Never. I don't know, it was 28 years. So either, it's like two-thirds of the Fortune 500 CEOs have one thing in common, military background. Two-thirds of those two-thirds have something else in common. Martial arts trained. Now, and now martial arts is you pull the punches, and, but back in the day when you split lips and busted jaws, they have structure, discipline structure. There aren't any. There aren't. Uh, and uh, Marcus, by the way, uh, when he's saying, 12 million, that's 12 million to him. That's not corporate top line revenue, uh, which isn't a bunch of money, but the, uh, again, it's better than the poking the eye with a sharp stick. Uh, okay, questions about um, Marcus. He's now married the girl, he's, he's, uh, and um, hopefully happily married. And, the, um, and they're signed up to come to the seminar as a couple next year. For the very reason I was telling you, Vanessa, that uh, couples make it only if they both come. We don't have any couples, not one, that didn't drag along the other half. If they're going to be involved in the business, there aren't any. And you can't fight a war on two fronts. You're either fighting the QLA battle, but not the family battle. You can't fight on two fronts. You just can't. I mean, Napoleon proved that, Hitler proved it, amongst others. You can't fight a, a war on two fronts. It's not possible. Um, he should be tougher. He's not. So he's got half the, the great traits, but not the, the, the toughness. Tough, personal toughness, yes, but not toughness that's translated onto somebody else. Okay, questions or comments about Marcus? Yes, sir. So he mentioned that everybody try to steal from him. Oh, yeah, hundred percent. And he's not even dealing with Asians. How do you prevent that, and how you punish for that? Oh, I'll do the punishment first. Fired. One time fired. There are no second chances. Fired. How do you prevent it? With great difficulty. Especially now. According to the way you think, it's hard to fire people. You're wrong. We're going to show you tomorrow how you fire people. <clears throat> Easy peasy. It's how you frame it, how you bring them on board. Remember? Human resources will hate you, but it's legal. Whether it's moral and ethical, that's for you to decide. But to me, people that are stealing aren't just stealing because they're taking money out of the cash register. They're not selling enough. They're not doing enough. You know, they're, 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 that's stealing to me. 
And so the, 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 the other end of that continuum was, well, Dan, I mean, not everybody is as capable. Well, then you only hire capable people. I've got 1,500 people to get five. I don't know what that is a percentage. Was that one thousandth of a percent? Or is it one ten thousandth? It doesn't matter. It's a low amount, right? When I tell people that, although he lived it right here, they, they can't believe it. How do you, how do you fire 1,495 people with great ease? <laughs> but my greatest story, not greatest, uh, ambush, ambush. Remember EJ? EJ they, they were an undercover uh, TV station in Asia that followed around and caught crooked politicians taking money and shit like that, and politicians sleeping with nine-year-olds and shit like that. Got on my back, and they said that I fired a thousand or eight hundred people on Christmas Eve. Wasn't you? We fired a bunch, but it was on the seventh or eighth of December. And so we had to get guards on the doors, and they chased us down the street, and it was fun. Sally didn't like it. Sally didn't like it. Sally doesn't like it when the paparazzi chase you down the streets. I thought it was fun. I was just hoping somebody would touch me, because they touch, then I can hit them. Okay, but nobody. They touched a lot of other people, but nobody ever touched. They're smarter than they look, because then I, I would have taken great pleasure in busting their fucking, snapping their neck like a pencil. Um, but you can, um, Marcus is a, is a phenom, 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 but I knew it from the beginning. That's why we trudged out there to the middle of fucking nowhere to, uh, I, I had to see uh, who produced him. Um, because they're, guys, there's few, they're few and far between. And do you know that by your own? I mean, how many people do you, have you ever met that are, you know, like he said, I used to work 120 hours, but I can't do it anymore. Now I only work 11.5, it's about 80 plus hours a week. And he's right, it's tough. I was an anomaly that way because I, I worked a lot into my 40s and I was still working more than that. Questions about, uh, another question. Oh, now getting back to your question. Uh, when you find them, you fire them, but it's how you hire them. And we're going to talk about that. And the, the, uh, and the people that follow this, again, it's like this, it's not part of the seven steps. It's another set of steps. But it takes longer to hire people when you want to protect yourself so you can get rid of them right away. The best in the United States is if you're in a free, uh, what's it called, uh, where you work uh, and you can fire them anytime you want. At, well, yeah, Texas, <clears throat> Florida. Nevada, uh, there's maybe five or six or seven, pardon? Michigan, you can just, uh, and I'm not saying to be frivolous, uh, just fire somebody over nothing, but you don't have to go through all the horse shit. <laughs> but I'm going to show you how to hire people so you, you don't have to go through all, all the horse shit. You go through some, a little additional horse shit to hire them, but then once you got them in on that contract, then it's easy um, to get rid of them. But people will figure out ways to take the money. And the more money you have, it's like Dan Locke says, check cash balances every morning. And I tease Dan because he's got all the little ninjas there. The, um, the, um, they will figure out a way to divert money, divert commissions, you know, get kickbacks. But that's when you're uh, up and successful. They don't, they don't try to steal your gold out of your teeth, you know, the first two, three deals. In Iran, they try to uh, steal the teeth out of your gold out of your teeth in the first deal. There's, there's two or three places where that's an exception. But uh, um, there was another comment about yes, sir. There's something about um, the other mentees, including uh, Marcus, when he's talking about volume, um, and um, there's something he mentioned about having a couple of deals lined up. Um, and then also a couple of banks lined up so that that deal can fit that bank, that deal can oh, fit that now, bank. Now, now, when you've done dozens and dozens of deals and you've dealt with 10 banks and you know the parameters that those banks want, you just call bank two and three, this is the deal. And so whatever, either the, maybe I'll, I'll alternate between those two banks for that kind of deal. And then they, they just say they accept the deal. 
and they say subject to due diligence, in other words, subject to them doing a, a quality of earnings and walking the property, you got the money. And that's where I was. And that's where he is. And he's been like this five years. So he built up a reputation of a few dozen deals. And he performed, as he said. I wasn't as good at uh, under-promising and over-delivering because I'm more on the Trump end. Uh, so I had a, a couple of deals I barely was able to perform against because I flapped my mouth. My alligator, uh, my, uh, my um, alligator mouth has overloaded my hummingbird ass on several occasions, several, where I overpromised and I barely delivered. And I, I, was, I was like uh, uh, Clark Kent over here, but I was telling him why I was, didn't perform. But that only happened a handful of times. Otherwise, I wouldn't have been able to get all that money. But now he's just getting to the level uh, of, you know, like he said, now a billion. And he's, he's still he's not working quite as hard as he used to work, but he's still working pretty hard for the norm. But if, 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 if you double, I used to say, if you double the normal work, out, work output, is that right? Work output, of, you'll get rich. Now you got to triple it. Because the work output of the average pe person now has gone down in the last 25 years. So now you got a, uh, so now you got a, the, the triple, the normal output. Because uh, here in Europe, uh, they work less, 40 or less hours a week. And they don't even like working that. And, uh, the, I won't say the average is 80, but, uh, somewhere between 80 and 100 for the kids that are successful. And for the kids that are super successful, it's in excess of that. That's in excess of that. Another question, any, uh, something else about Marcus? Yes, sir. Two things I didn't understand quite. Uh, he said, uh, you say the price, I tell you the deal. Oh, yeah. The, the, I learned it, the Onassis, I learned a lot from the Onassis people. The Greeks are shrewd fuckers. I mean, the, the, the shipping magnets are really slick. And, um, when I was privileged to be uh, mentored by uh, Konstantin Gratzos, uh, many times, ha they don't haggle about it. I said, fine, you, you, you pick the price, I'll pick the terms. Like he said, 6.4 million was ridiculously too high. Not such good English, right? He says, fine, I'll give you the 6.4 million, but I'll give you 3 million now and no money for the next three or four years, whatever he said, no interest, no principal. Then he went and refinanced it, and he made the deal pay for itself. But that's easy. Okay, you pick the price, I pick the term. Now, if, if it's an Egyptian or a Persian that's asking for 100 billion and the thing's worth 80 grand, you can't do that. That, that, that doesn't work. And don't laugh. I mean, sometimes you'll get in the, uh, uh, in the Middle East, and the whole country's not worth what they're asking for the deal. And you just kind of walk away. But before you get on the plane... Before, I mean, you know, and they always want to see you in person. Well, you may not leave the country. Yeah. Or like Khashoggi. And I knew Khashoggi's uncle. The guy they chopped up, you know, in the Turkish embassy. I knew his uncle back in the day. Um, what else about, um, yes, ma'am. Um, it's just a comment. Of course, you never ask a seller how much they want for your business. Never. You always propose, right? No, you say th this is the parameters that we're buying, three to five. And they lock on five. You don't want to pay more than three. But that's a, the unspoken part of that offer. They lock on five, and then they think, well, five, and maybe I can get them to six times. That's what they're thinking. And you know three, and you really know you're buying them for one and a half. Because due diligence 
is a euphemism for knocking the fucking price down. Only once in 50 years, and you, or you heard the sailor, that deal, have I ever seen the price go up after due diligence? One time in 50 years. They always go down. Do they go down from five to four to three times even? Depends on how much shit. Because there's always something wrong. And as Marcus pointed out quite uh, accurately, there's always something going to go wrong with the deal. A hundred percent, I can guarantee it. And that's what you use to knock the price down. Because they're going to say that all the, uh, let's say you're buying, ma don't buy manufacturing. You're buying manufacturing, and they always say, let's say they're using uh, accelerated depreciation, which is, I'm not trying to confuse you, but uh, so they're taking the write-off up front, accelerated depreciation, and you go and you look at the machines, and the machines are 80 years old. I bought a ice cream refinery place in, in Moscow. That the, the machines were pre World War II, <laughs> and, the, and then all of a sudden, nobody spoke English. Up until then, you know, we were, eh, more vodka. Eh, but then all of a sudden, nobody spoke English. I said, "What year?" And my engineer guy scrapes the grease away from us. It says 1913 here on the side here. And then the, you know, the purchase price dropped. It didn't drop by half, but it dropped by 30%. Because in that particular deal, unfortunately, uh, we were buying a lot of equipment. But due diligence will knock the price down. Now, the other thing is, which is kind of a, a derivative of what G Gerard said a couple of days ago, is that not exa exactly how Gerard said it, but the banks will come in with their uh, quality of earnings, and they may say that, you know, the quality of earnings are only 60% of what you led us to believe. And of course, you led them to believe what the seller led you to believe, or what the broker for the seller led you to believe, right? And then, they, of course, they lied. And they don't call it lying, they call it sins of commission as, as opposed to omission and the omission with if you ask me no questions I tell you no lies everybody understand that if you ask me no questions I tell you no lies if you don't ask me if I'm cheating on you I'm not going to tell you a lie because I'm not you know but if you ask me if I'm cheating on you and then I lie that's a sin of commission I know I'm lying to you everybody understand that and that's what the sellers live by they think that they're okay because, well, I'm not about down in Texas and Oklahoma. Well, I, I didn't lie to the man. God damn, he never asked me the right question. It's like raising kids. Unless you ask the little shitheads the exact fucking question and you narrow it down and you pin them in a corner, you don't get the right answer. I remember when our boys tried to burn one of our neighbor's house in Rolling Hills. <clears throat> Rolling Hills. And uh, the, um, he's a big uh, record producer. And, um, <laughs> and uh, I was out of town, and I finally got back in town, and the, uh, they weren't asking the kids the right question. Dan Jr., one of his tennis shoes was, and his leg was burnt from the fire. How'd that get burnt, Danny? What burnt, Dad? What do you mean? His fucking toes are hanging out, you know. And of course, nobody else asked him that. But I mean, I, and then Derek, his younger brother, Danny made me do it, Danny made me do it. Instead of the castle man made me do it, my big brother made me do it, which is probably true. Because Dan Jr. Can, is a bullshit artist extraordinaire like his father. He probably convinced that, that this guy didn't need his fucking house anyway, let's burn it down. It's a lot longer story than that, but uh, the bottom line is the fucking house almost burned down. So um, the, um, but you have plenty of opportunity, and that's why I don't believe that there's any longevity to the kids like you buying businesses without seeing them now because of Corona. It's a recipe for disaster. You've got to see the asset. You have to. 
Not your lawyer, not your, you. Because, I mean, you're the one on the hook. But as Marcus said, you can't do 20, 25 deals a year if you're going to, trying to negotiate with banks. But now he's got 10, 15 banks that have done all these deals. Everybody's happy, slappy. They're trying to get money out the door. So that, you know, that's, that's not the problem. Although uh, in an email I got from here recently, he said that the uh, real estate you know, prices are going down. And they, they have to. It's no different. Uh, it's just not as big as a magnitude because they didn't go up as much as Valley in some of the uh, places like Mayfair and London, um, Manhattan. But and nobody published it. Six quarters in a row, Manhattan real estate has gone down in value. This is before Corona. Before Corona, six quarters in a row, Manhattan real estate prices have gone down. How come you don't read about it? Am I the only, again, am I the only one? Because if they publish it, it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy and panic. Mayfair, excuse me, Mayfair London, five quarters in a row, pre-corona, real estate prices have gone down. Uh, Mayfair is like the Beverly Hills, uh, Manhattan of London. Again, nobody writes about it. If you watch BBC at three in the morning, some guy writes, uh, uh, reads a sentence about it, and that's it. Because, I mean, <clears throat> the public can only take so much truth. Question. Well, actually, it's more common. Uh, the prices are dropping dramatically in New York as people are fleeing the cities. Oh, well, now, yeah, but this is before. Prices <coughs> to rise in the suburbs, uh, an average of 10%. So, yeah. opportunity for people are panicking even if prices are dropping. What else? Yes, ma'am. Um, what is the um, explanation when the seller asks you, why are you offering me this times EBITDA? How you come... That's the marketplace, you stupid bitch. If she's a woman, that's what you tell her. Okay. <laughs> let, me, let me write. That's, the mar that's what the market... And uh, that's a very good point for a different reason, and I'm glad that Pendeja said something about it. <laughs> you blame the banks always. This is really, especially because you're cunts. And you can't say, it's because that's what I say it's worth, bitch. You won't do that, will you? No. You get some glasses, Clark, I'm telling you. You blame the banks. It's the financial environment, ma'am, I'm sorry. I don't say I'm sorry because I don't apologize or explain. I'm sorry, that's just what the marketplace is. If you're not interested, I'll be on my way. Everybody for Stein? Now, he doesn't sound as German as uh, Andreas. Yeah, he's kind of a half-assed German, so you from Austria. Super successful, though. Super successful. And I still remember the... Uh, and every once in a while, one of these guys and gals stumbles through that I can see something uh, in their... Uh, all right, and what I'm looking for is hunger, fire in their belly. Not just talk about fire in their belly. And the, um, and quite often, you know, uh, on the one side, or as or they would, on the one hand, we got Marcus, who was a professional athlete. You know. On the other hand, we got a teenager who was homeschooled, you know. So, and there's everything in between. It's, you know, it, it's, and it's, again, it's how they framed, Josh's parents framed his upbringing, and how Marcus's parents framed his upbringing. And they set high standards. So the bar was high, not low. And so they, they're just used to that. And in Marcus's case, his now wife, his then girlfriend, then turned fiance, is a high performance gal. Financial professional. I think she's with Deloitte, if I remember correctly. Um, and then you, you set the high standards. Rich people figured out this a long time ago when they, uh, they formed the Princeton's, Yale's, and all the Ivy League schools, and the Oxfords and Cambridges, you know, 500 years before. You send your kids to school with bright people, the brightness rubs off.
Wealthy people figured this shit out a long time ago. And you send your kids to school with ditch diggers. Not, not, nothing wrong with being a ditch digger. You know, feed your family and that kind of stuff. What, what, what would you rather have? Your kid rubbing our uh, shoulders with Clinton's, Kennedy's, the Duke and Duchess of Shitbag, or Arvie and Margaret, Pea Brain, Blue Collar, Ditch Digger? You tell me. And if you're going to send your kids to those kind of schools, you start, you know, uh, they have to be, they have to get good grades. They don't have to be smart, but they got to at least get good grades. And so, and, and that's a long process from the time of kindergarten, four, five, six, right, to 17, 18. That's a long time to keep the little shit bags focused. And most parents give up. I.e., what you turn up, you wind up, excuse me. It's an easy formula. It's an easy formula. And having lived it, and thankfully not having to go through it again, it's a bitch. It's like managing people. It's a bitch. And you're going to hear everybody say the same thing. Not everybody will say that they're being stolen from, which they are, but um, it's the managing of the people. And to bring on world-class performers is not fucking easy. And uh, another guy that... Um, the whole sales team sold 10% uh, of what he sold. Because he's selling his. It's his. Anything else about um, Marcus? Okay, YouTube, thank you.